There is nothing better than music to tug at the heartstrings of each one of us. Thank you, praise team. Good morning, church family. Now, when I say church family, I'm just not talking to a denomination or a building with four walls. I am talking to God's children, a group of fellowship believers who believe in Jesus Christ, who come together to celebrate His love, who choose to stand under the umbrella of God's unconditional love. That's where we're at this morning. And if there are any of you out there who feel frustrated or angry or hungry or just overwhelmed, you have come to the right place. Jesus himself said, come to me. Hear the words of Christ. Come to me, all who are weary or burdened, and I will give you rest. Oh, I will give you rest. This morning, I invite each one of us to rest in the arms of Jesus as we worship Him. I stand here today speaking to an empty sanctuary. But I've invited a few of my friends here to be here for moral support. I, I hope you don't mind looking at their backsides as you look at my congregation. In fact, this little guy right here, he's still praising with the music, I think. He's an awesome little one. We begin this morning as we talk about our subject of trusting God in the time of crisis. In doing so, I would like to take us back in a time when Jesus spoke to the disciples and his followers for the last few moments of his time on earth. He's been with the people for three and a half years. He's mingled with them. He's met their needs. He's got to know them. He's healed them. He's helped them in every way possible. He's had a relationship with people, especially his disciples. They have become like family. They are special to him. That is why the words that we hear in verse 20 of chapter 28 of Matthew are, teach them to obey everything that I have told you to do. You can be sure that I will be with you always. I will continue with you until the end of time. These words that Jesus spoke to his disciples, his followers, were words of promise. I am with you now and forever. Ah. This is a promise that not only the disciples held on to, but we can bank on even today. And I thank the Lord for that. Pray with me, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your promises. I thank you for being there for each one of us as you were with the disciples, meeting our needs, ministering to us, allowing us to have a relationship personally with you and getting to know you better. Father, may the Spirit move in a mighty way this morning. May your message be given in a way that you want me to speak. And may each one of us who are here be able to experience you in a mighty way as we come to worship you this Sabbath morning. Thank you, Father, for who you are, for the Son of Jesus Christ who came to give us life, our Savior and our friend. Amen. Why are those words in Matthew so important? Well, it doesn't take much when we start looking around us that there is a crisis, a pandemic that is taking place in this world. The world is shaken. It's taken off guard and it's turned upside down by a microscopic virus that doubles the number in a variance of just a few days at a time. In fact, 
In times like these, it is so good to know that we are not alone. It began only three months ago, but globally, it has infected over 2,665,000 people. As a result, many people are wondering if there is any place on earth that is safe. Well, the answer to that is yes and no. No, there is no place on this earth that is completely safe. We live in a fallen world that is under God's curse because of man's original sin at the very beginning of the Garden of Eden. As a result, danger lurks around us everywhere we go. And we cannot find any place on this earth that will be 100% safe. But the answer is also yes. Yes, there is a safe place for those of us who place our faith in the hope of God, who have the faith in Jesus Christ. That safe place is in the arms of Christ our Savior and under the care and the sovereignty of the Almighty God. That's where we are safe. Unfortunately, In times of crisis, we often, well, we often lose focus of where we're going. It's been said, when Christopher Columbus started out, he didn't know where he was going. When he got there, he didn't know where he was. And when he got back, he didn't know where he had been. Have you ever experienced that in your life? I know for myself personally, I have found myself at home walking into a room and wondering, hmm, why was I here? Sometimes it can be confusing. But if there is ever a time that we should feel lost, confused, fearful, and not knowing our direction or what lies ahead, it's now. But at the same time, we need to see beyond the feelings. We need to see beyond the dark clouds that loom above us and remember what we know to be true. We are not alone. Yes, we would like to make all things go away, like turning off a TV or taking out the garbage. But this is the real world. Real time, right now, as I speak, no hype, no fake news, no myth-making, but a lot of experts are saying that it's not going to be over quickly. We are experiencing and looking at today something that is not from God. And I believe that you know who that culprit is. Revelation 12, 12 reads, The heavens should rejoice together with everyone who lives there. But pity the earth and the sea because the devil was thrown down to the earth. He knows his time is short and he is very angry. 1 Peter 5, 8 reads, Be alert, be on watch. Your enemy, the devil roams like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. He knows his destiny. He knows that Christ had victory on the cross. He knows where he's going. He's heading for that lake of fire, and he is determined to take everybody and anybody with him. In that same there text found in 1 Peter 5, in verses 1 to 2, it says, From the words of Peter, I appeal to you to be shepherds of the flock that God gave you and to take care of it willingly as God wants you to do. I can't help but in this time right now when we have to separate ourselves because of the, the virus that has taken place, the enemy is creating havoc with us as individuals. Normally we come together, we pray together, we hold each other together. That gives us strength. 
But right now the enemy is almost like a lion out there in the wilderness in Africa looking at the prey and trying to peek out, pick out the weakest to be able to devour. That's why it is so important for we as Christians, as family, to reach out to those around us, our community, our neighbors. Let them know that we are there for them, that we care for them, that God is with them, that we are not abandoned, that God is with us. Because if not us, then who? I guess the real marching orders that the devil works on is found in John 10.10. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. And we know that thief to be the enemy. He takes no survivors. I tell the children when I do Bible studies with them, he doesn't like you at all. In fact, he doesn't care even if he has to kill you. If we stop right there, we have no hope. We have nothing to look forward to. But the second part of that text in John 10, 10, it says, But I, Jesus Christ, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. There's the antidote. That's what we need in this pandemic crisis right now is to be able to have Christ in our life and to experience Him, to live a life of abundance now, not when we get to heaven, but now to experience Him. It's been said, we have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and His teachings in our past history. Oswald Chambers shared this quote, We are not responsible for the circumstances that we are in, but we are responsible for the way we allow those circumstances to affect us. We can either allow them to get on top of us, or we can allow them to transform us into what God wants us to be. It's in the perspective on how God wants us to look at this. Do we have Christ with us, or are we being battered and taken down by the enemy himself? We must always remember, always remember that with Christ, you are deeply and completely loved, Romans 8, 38. With Christ, you are totally and completely forgiven, 1 John 2, 12. When God sees you, he sees the righteousness of Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. With Christ, you mean the whole world to him, John 3, 16. He thinks you are beautiful right now, Song of Solomon 4, 1. He is committed to your restoration, Romans 8, 29. With Christ You are not now, nor have you ever been alone. Alone. God is with us always. God wants us to be like this rope. Strong. Binding. Something that is very hard to break. Something that is very hard to even tear apart. We find in the scriptures of Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12, it reads, Two people are better than one. When two people work together, they get more done. If one person falls, the other person can reach out to help. But those who are alone when they fall have no one to help them. If two people sleep together, they will be warm. But a person sleeping alone will not be warm. An enemy might be able to defeat one person, but two people can stand back to back to defend each other. And three people, three people are even stronger. They are like a rope that has three parts wrapped together. It is very hard to break. 
The illustration within the rope is pretty simple. In reality, we are just one strand to a part of a rope. But within a church family, within a community of believers, it says that we can be like, if nothing else, two individuals that can strengthen each other. If one of us falls, the other one is there to pick us up. But in this pandemic, it has created an environment that we need to separate. We need to distance ourselves. We need to not socialize together. And in doing so, we have become like this, individually standing by ourselves, not able to come together to have the strength that God wants us to have as a rope. And unfortunately, with the circumstances like it is, with the stress and the problems and the anxieties and the frustration, there are those who are out there who are afraid. They are afraid because of the stress, because of the lies, because of the doubts that the enemy has placed upon them. They feel that they are left alone and there is no one out there for them. May we always remember that it's just not a rope that is a a strand of three. We as a church are three times tens because the more that we come together, the stronger we become as a body of believers. The more that we can be there for our neighbors, the people that we come in contact with, we need to be able to reach out and touch them. But right now we are limited. And that's what creates difficulty. In closing, I would like to leave with you this thought. Often we wish God would provide advance warning of the storms of life. But God typically does not warn us ahead of time. Though He does not hide this truth that, he will, that we will face troubles, hardships, and difficulties in this life, in a general sense, He does not reveal the particulars of our sufferings. If He did, if He did, we were likely to be inclined to walk by sight rather than faith. We would try to control our own lives, avoiding the pain rather than learning to trust Him and His goodness and His promise. Above all else, we must learn that He is in control. I came across a text that read, Fear does not stop death, it stops life. And worrying does not take away tomorrow's troubles, it takes away today's peace. I have shared with you before an equation that I think is so appropriate that applies to today. And that equation is this. Trust in God plus surrender to God equals peace from God. May we not rely upon ourselves. May we turn to Him solely and say, Lord, I am Yours through this crisis, through this time of concerns, through this turmoil, I am yours. I give my life to you. All I ask is for you to give me that peace that you can only provide. The world can't give it to me. It's the peace that you give to me. So when the, the fierce storms of life come, we must not be ashamed to run and hide in God. We are all His children. Rest assured that His grip on you is stronger than your grip on Him. Run and hide in God as your refuge and strength for the everlasting presence to be... Oh, I'm going to start again on this one. Rest assured that His grip is stronger than your grip on Him. Run and hide in God as your refuge and strength your ever-present help in times of trouble. This morning, as we finish our sermon, I want to leave you with this thought, and that thought is my prayer for you in this coming week, 
is to be safe in the arms of our Savior. Be attentive to others and be the hands and feet of Christ when opportunities arise. And may you experience joy in this new normal. Until we meet again, God bless. Thank you, Pastor Fred, for those inspiring words. And thank you all for joining us. Hey, I want to invite you to our new series coming up. I hear a lot of talk these days how life after COVID-19 will let us experience a new normal, how life will never be the same again. Well, the truth is, there was another time in history when the world was never the same again. The spreading news of a resurrected Savior changed the face of the world. So join us next week and in the next few months as we will journey together through the book of Acts, discovering how God began this unstoppable movement that ushered in a whole new normal, this unstoppable movement known as the Church Unleashed. Look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a wonderful day.